Hi guys, this is Rohit Farmer and in this video I'm going to show you how to use NeoVim or Vim text editor as an integrated development environment that is IDE for our programming language. And this video is actually a shorter version of a much detailed video that I posted almost a week ago on the same topic and you can find the link to that video in the description below. So let's get started. So in this tutorial also I'm going to follow the same github gist that I used in my previous video and you can find the link to this github gist in the description below. So first we have to make sure that we have the right requirements for the plugins that we are going to use with our NeoVim or Vim text editor. So we need our version greater than or equal to 3 and NeoVim version greater than or equal to 0.2 and if you are using Vim text editor then you need Vim version greater than or equal to 8.1. I'm working on Linux Mint 19 that is based on Ubuntu 18.84 and I have also written this tutorial primarily for Linux based systems. It may work on Windows and Mac also. So once we have made sure that we have all the right requirements installed on our computer, we have to install a plugin manager. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use Wimplug plugin manager and to install it, you have to copy these two lines from the gist and paste it into your terminal. This is going to download the Wimplug plugin manager and install it for us. And once we have installed our plugin manager, we are going to install the required plugins. So I'm going to copy these lines and paste it to Wim to init.wim file. So if you are using NeoVim text editor, then you have to put these lines in init.wim file. And if you are using a vim text editor then you have to put these line in dot vim rc file so since i am using neo vim text editor i am going to copy these lines and put it into init dot vim file so for that i'll type nvim and navigate to dot config nvim and open init dot vim file and i'm going to paste these lines at the very top of the file i close it open it again and to install these plugins, I have to type colon plug install. So Wimplug plugin manager is going to download these plugins from their respective GitHub repositories and install it for us. So this has installed all the required plugins, but we still need to tweak some of the settings that are related to the plugin and also the vanilla settings for the new Wim or uh, Wim text editor. And to do that, I'm going to copy these lines from my GitHub gist and paste it again in the init.vim file. So I'm going to put these lines right below the list of the plugins and save and close the init.vim file. So this must have now installed all the required plugins and also tweaked the necessary settings. Now I'm going to go to my project folder and show you how you can execute an R script from within NeoVim text editor. So I have some folders in my project folder and also a couple of R scripts. So I'm going to open this init.r and trigger the R console by pressing backslash RF. So now you can see the R console on right hand side of the screen and you can navigate in between the split screen by using NeoVim or Vim split screen uh, keyboard shortcut. So if you want to move from the left hand side of the split screen to the right hand side of the split screen, you have to press Ctrl W L to go from left to right and Ctrl W H to go from right to left. In addition to NVIM R plugin that actually opens the R console for you. I have also installed I have also installed Nerd Tree that is going to open a file browser for us. So to toggle nerd tree, you have to press comma and N. You can use your arrow key to navigate through your folders. And then once you have reached the file that you want to open, you can press enter. And this is going to open your file in the editor portion of, of this whole system. You can close the nerd tree by again pressing comma and N. So we can execute this file in three different ways. First, by executing one line at a time. Second, by executing a selection of code. 
and third by executing the entire file in one go. So to execute one line at a time, you have to press backslash D. So this is going to send the line on which the cursor is to the R console and execute that line for us and also move the cursor to the next line. Again, to execute the next line, we can again press backslash D and to execute the third line again, we can press backslash D. Now we have reached to a portion of the code where it's a block. So to execute this block of code, we can go to the visual mode and select all these lines together and press backslash SS. So this is going to send the selection of code in the R terminal and execute it for us. Because this block of code is not producing any output to this standard out, we can't see anything in the R console, but it has executed the code and it must have produced the ggplot object for us. So to visualize all the objects that we have created so far in the script, we can open object browser by pressing backslash RO. And this is going to open an object browser at the middle of the screen. So in the object browser, um, first it shows all the variables or the objects that you have created in the script. So if I go to GG, that is a ggplot object and press enter, it's going to show me all the elements of this ggprop object. I can press enter again to close it. And if I go to Midwest, that's the data set that, you have, that we have loaded in the script. If I press enter, then it's going to show me all the columns or all the variables within this Midwest data set. And I can actually go to these variables also and press enter. And it's going to show me a portion of the data that is contained within this column in this particular data frame. In addition to the objects, you can also uh, visualize what are the libraries that are loaded in this particular art sessions. For that, we can go to libraries and press enter and it's going to give me a list of all the libraries that I have loaded in this R session along with a one line description of what those libraries do. We can close this object browser by again pressing backslash RO and this will take us back to our code editor. Now that we have a ggplot object, uh, we can plot it and for that I'll go to this line and I'll execute this, I'll execute just this line by pressing backslash D and it's going to open the plot in an external window. Because this whole system is running inside a terminal, you can't visualize this plot inside a terminal and that's why your, that's why your a plot is going to pop up in an external window. And this window actually works even if you are running this terminal through SSH, provided you have X11 forwarding. I also want to show you another plugin that I have installed uh, that is NCMR for synchronous auto completion. So if I start typing the name of our data set Midwest, then it's going to show me uh, all the possible keywords that can complete what I'm typing. So I'm, uh, I was typing Midwest, so I'll just choose the option Midwest and, and it does the auto completion for us. So synchronous auto completion means that it's going to give you options to auto complete what you are typing as you are typing and the good thing about this synchronous auto completion is that it not only shows you the primary keyword in this case because I'm, I'm working with a data frame if I type dollar then it's also going to give me a list of all the columns or the variables that are available in that data frame and it's not only going to give me the name of the columns but also what type of a variable it is or what type of a data is contained in this column so it could be character, integer, <coughs> numeric factor, whatsoever. Similar to RStudio, we can also visualize our data frame in an external window. So to do that, you have to type view and then the name of the data frame. And if I, if I execute just this line by pressing backslash D, then I will get a pop-up window with my data set. But this pop-up window is fixed, uh, you can't scroll it. So that means that the amount of data that you can visualize over here depends upon how big your screen is. So, so far I have either executed this script one line at a time or a selection of a couple of lines, but I can also execute this, in this entire script in one go, uh, similar to pressing source button in RStudio. And to do that, I have to press backslash AA. 
So this is going to execute the entire script for us and you can see we have both the ggplot and also our data frame in pop-up windows. You can also open help or documentation within the system and to do that you have to go to your R console and type question mark and the keyword for which you are seeking help. So I'm going to type ggplot and this is going to open another split screen window within the terminal and you can use your arrow key to go through your documentation and once you are done you can close it by typing colon Q and this is going to take you back to your editor portion of the screen. So this is pretty much it for this tutorial and if you want to know things more in detail then you can watch my previous video and the link to that video is in the description below. And I hope that you have learned something through this video and thanks for watching.